Welcome to the Awesomers.com podcast. If you love to learn, and if you're motivated to expand your mind, and heck, if you desire to break through those traditional paradigms and find your own version of success, you are in the right place. Awesomers around the world are on a journey to improve their lives and the lives of those around them. We believe in paying it forward, and we fundamentally try to live up to the great Zig Ziglar quote, where he said, you can have everything in your life you want if you help enough other people get what they want. It doesn't matter where you came from, it only matters where you're going. My name is Steve Simonson, and I hope you will join me on this awesomer journey. If you're launching a new product manufactured in China, you will need professional, high-resolution, Amazon-ready photographs. Because Simo Global has a team of professionals in China, you will oftentimes receive your listing's photographs before your product even leaves the country. This streamlined process will save you the time, money, and energy needed to concentrate on marketing and other creative content strategies before your item is in stock and ready for sale. Visit simoglobal.com to learn more, because a picture should be worth 1,000 keywords. This is episode 17 of the Podcast. We're thrilled to have you with us today. Remember, as always, you can find the show notes at awesomers.com slash 17. That's awesomers.com backslash 17. Now, today, my special guest is Yev Marasenko, and I hope I got that right, Yev. I know I, I try for perfection, but I'll give it another go here in a minute. Uh, Yev went from being a scientist to an entrepreneur, which is a unique experience. He left his academic uh, career as an ecologist and sustainability expert and began trying to crack the Facebook advertising cro- code as well as the Amazon algorithm and all things about marketing. Using his PhD knowledge of experimental testing and data analysis, he is the director in e- of e-commerce and growth analytics at Heroclip, a hyper-growth startup company changing the way you carry your stuff. Uh, this was actually uh, featured uh, on the ESPN Gear We Love spot, the Hero Clip, a very cool little product. So kudos to Yev and the team. Yev is frequently invited to present in private mastermind groups, including the Catalyst88.com mastermind group, which is an exclusive 25000 a year group of brilliant entrepreneurs. And he was invited to speak there and show what's working, including relevant case studies on how brands can go from uh, spending $100 a day to over $1,000 a day profitably on outside traffic. Now, the best of all, Yev has kind of worked together and put together a first-of-its-kind e-commerce tracking tool to track Amazon sales outside of Amazon using Facebook ads, for example. So the, the traffic is generated from outside Amazon. And it starts on Facebook or, um, you know, and it can go through whatever route necessary. And it's all tracked with Yev's new tool. So we're going to talk all about that today. It's super exciting. Glad you're here. Welcome back, Awesomers. It's Steve Simes. I'm coming back to you again with another podcast episode. And uh, today I've got my very special guest, Yev, and I'm going to pronounce this my very best, Marashenko. That's perfect. Yeah, just Woo! so it's written. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I'm one for one, everybody. So that's, uh, that's pretty good. So Yev, welcome. Uh, I know that you uh, are, a, do I call you a doctor? How does, does that work? I know you're a PhD, but uh, is it proper for me to call you Dr. Yev or Dr. Marashenko? Some, some people call me that, even Dr. Yev, but I don't go by that anymore, so no, you don't have to. <laughs> okay, good news. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just make an audible here and call you Dr. Phil. That will work for everybody's benefit. So, <laughs> no, so welcome, Yev. It really is a, a pleasure to have you on the show, and we're going to talk uh, to the folks today about some of the, the things that I think make you an awesomer and, and some of the really unique things that you guys are doing. Uh, but I'd, I'd love it if you could just summarize kind of where you are today, what, you know, what you're doing today. Uh, professionally, as an entrepreneur, etc. Just a broad summary so we can kind of give people a frame of reference from your own words. Of course. And today, my main focus is on Heroclip. We're growing. I'm leading all of the digital marketing and we're experimenting, always trying new, to, new things. So that, that's really fun. And uh, we're growing, going to all of these events and uh, people are contacting us and wanting different brand partnerships. So that's been really great. And with the help of all kinds of outside traffic and Facebook and, and Google from everywhere and Amazon. Uh, so, so that's my primary focus, experimenting there, trying all kinds of new things, listening to other ideas, experimenting. And, and through that experimentation, experimentation, I'm in different groups with Amazon and group um, e-commerce brands and uh, just always sharing feedback, always also getting invited to present in different areas. Uh, people are learning from kind of what we're doing and kind of behind the scenes, but we're, 
public brand so people can kind of look it up and see exactly what we're doing, follow our funnels and our ads. And, and also that's allowed us to help uh, make one of these tools that's uh, separate from HeroClip, but it's allowed me to uh, really help different Amazon brands that are trying the Facebook advertising. So focusing on that, helping other entrepreneurs and marketers um, increase their efficiency. Boy, that's a lot of things to do. And uh, I certainly understand a busy schedule, that's for sure. So we're going to dive into some of those uh, details and talk about this idea that, you know, even when you advertise on Facebook uh, using Yev's tool, which came out of kind of his firsthand experience and, and really him putting the clues together. We'll talk about how he's leveraged some of his education and background and, and even his uh, superlative efforts at Heroclip to kind of put this whole puzzle together uh, for the benefit of other entrepreneurs. We're going to do that right after the break. Uh, but first, we're, uh, once we do the break, we're going to come back and talk also a little bit about uh, Yev's origin story because I want to get a little bit more detail uh, from Yev on that as well. So we'll be right back after this. Empower, the name says it all. Connecting e-commerce entrepreneurs with great people, ideas, systems, and the services needed to stay business dynamic and to grow. Empowery is a network, a cooperative venture of tools and resources to make you better at what you do, because we love what you do. We are you. Visit Empowery.com to learn more. Okay, here we are back again. And uh, Yev, we're going we're gonna to take a little bit of a, a detour here. So usually in a, a, a awesome authority story, we just dive directly into framing the problem, you know, the common problem that, that entrepreneurs have. But because uh, I kind of know you and, and know a little bit about your background. I think it's so interesting. So we're going we're gonna to blend in an awesome origin story with this. So the, the first question I'd like to ask you, and I, I, um, I don't remember the exact detail, but I have a, a clue to the answer. Uh, where were you born? I was born in Ukraine, so, yeah. but I moved, moved to U.S. when I was eight years old. So I'm very Americanized by this point. No doubt you are. Uh, I just love the background stories for everybody. You know, everybody comes from all over the, the world and has put together such unique things. And then um, tell me this, uh, Yev, when you, once you move to the U.S., what, what types of work were your parents doing? It's, it's always interesting to me to see the entrepreneurial influences. Were they in the education space or what, what, what did they do? Yeah, that's actually very interesting where it's um, just kind of like people coming to a different country and doing all kinds of different stuff. So it was, uh, so my mom was just helping other people like in their home. So kind of like maid work. And then both of my parents were doing pizza delivery for a few years. And then, uh, both of my parents were doing like they were doing truck driving so like across the country and locally wow. so i was like with my brothers and my two older brothers at home and figuring stuff on our own uh, so th those were s some of the main ones and then at some point my dad ended up opening up a, a business but it's like carpet cleaning water damage restoration so like local service business and that kind of like started getting my uh, mind into like a business world again it's not like a big business but it started thinking about money and you have to like purchase things and provide a service, provide value. So it's kind of like this diverse experience. Very interesting. Uh, so first of all, I love that kind of immigrant story, right? It's like, hey, they, they came over and they do whatever they got to do to make things go. And I love that. And actually I share, you know, uh, in my high school days and then just beyond, I had a carpet cleaning and restoration kind of background, uh, including working as a helper. One of the guys just sucking rugs and rolling up hose. Uh, all the way up until I bought. Oh them. man, yeah, you did I it, remember right? that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So we'll we'll uh, we'll share off the off the air uh, some uh, rug sucking stories, but uh, no doubt that I've got some good ones. So that's a fun uh, background. Now, how did you how did you vector into the education space? Because obviously, accomplishing the uh, high uh, education standard of uh, getting a PhD that takes a lot of work, a lot of effort. Uh, how did that How did that happen? Yeah, early on, it was more of like where I knew I like nature and kind of like the environment, like that's far as I knew. I didn't think beyond that. And then I had to make a decision. All right, like, what am I going to school for? It's like business stuff, computer stuff or science stuff. So going to science stuff and then it just led to working on the bachelor's uh, and then just meeting all kinds of cool professors, getting opportunity to do different research and, and had to make decisions. It was kind of this mix where I didn't research other things and I just like had these opportunities in front of me. So that led to working on the masters and then the PhD right away. And they were all in Arizona. So it was like one after the other. So, so there's this benefit where I was like doing it. and I was growing through it. Now that I'm done, I have it. It's all behind me. Like I have the letters under my name. 
But at the same time, when I look back, I'm like, I didn't even explore like other things. I was just like in this momentum. So there's like good and bad with that. I was definitely kind of like in this academic world, kind of just like how everyone is kind of looking down, working on your research. So now I kind of see bigger picture how there's, there's other things out there. And even when I was working on the, on the program, it was very cross-disciplinary. It was always trying to, you know, like maybe the, I like your question about the origin story because that maybe the, the multicultural perspective adds to like what other perspectives out there that definitely went into my research experience, kind of asking questions in a different way than other colleagues were asking about just regular scientific questions. Well, and again, this is kind of the, the one of the things that I love most about Awesomers is we, we're able to see these breadcrumb trails and they may all lead to Awesomer in the middle, but they start from every point and every vector in the universe, right? It doesn't matter where in the world. It doesn't matter uh, the parental background. It doesn't matter your background, education or otherwise, right? Uh, religion, race, creed, color, none of it matters at the end of the day, as long as people are trying to break out of that paradigm of normal and, and you know, achieve something. And, and you are certainly achieving great things at HeroClip, uh, which is a company that I have a great amount of respect for. Mina Yu, who is the founder there, will be on an Awesomers episode, no doubt, in the near future. Um, how long have you been uh, over at HeroClip, Yev? Yeah, it's been over a year. It's been a great journey. So there's this like this transition from the academic world where I, I still brought over like my kind of like research experience and data analysis. Again, not like a data scientist, but at least I can look at data and make interpretations. So I brought that over and it directly related to the marketing world and the business world of making decisions, trying marketing strategies and doing that for over a year at HeroClip and we've seen great, great effects in our digital marketing. No doubt about that. There are a number of noteworthy takeaways there um, that I'm not going to uh, share your scorecard with them. Uh, you can share it if you wish, but you know, being able to grow an audience very rapidly, being able to scale a company very rapidly, it, re it relies on the top of the marketing funnel, right? You got to have prospects, you got to have leads, you got to have people pouring into that funnel. And that's something that the team over there, and I think, uh, uh, you know, uh, Yev has been a, a key part of that effort to drive so much growth. And, and really, it's an exciting time to feel all that growth as a culture, I imagine. Is that true? Absolutely. And there's multiple parts of it where there's other team members that have, have done an awesome job at whether it's the branding and the product itself. So there's quality behind it. It's creating value. People are using it in a ways that they're always sending us new pictures of like in ways we didn't even think of to use it. So, so, so there's like the quality behind it and that makes my job easier where I'm not just like marketing anything. So there's like that part is taken care of uh, the community, the branding is there. And then on the marketing side, that's allowed us to uh, not only grow, but experiment in ways where uh, that's where I've been able to, whether it's from a growth hacking perspective or just kind of like innovative marketing strategies and, and yeah, growing, growing our email list incredibly, or it's, several hundred subscribers every day and growing our uh, Facebook advertising budget profitably. And this is some of the most common questions I get. How do we go from, you know, $10 per day ad spend to $100 per day to $1,000 per day and over? And, uh, and that's something we'll talk about deeper, deeper today. Some of those strategies, what, what you can do if you're kind of like starting out or if you're already further ahead, how to do that in your digital marketing. Well, I, I really love that, that kind of full perspective. And I want to just take a moment to remind that the awesomers out there listening that, you know, you have touched on a very important point, right? Which is that, you know, he can be a world-class guy at driving leads and, and driving those digital marketing funnels. But if the product is no good, then who cares, right? Or, or the product can be great and digital marketing can be great. But if the people responsible to ship out the product are no good, you got a problem, right? And so every part of your functional um, departments in a company has to be able to execute with excellence. Without that, the weakest link will break the chain. And even though that's trite and, and maybe people are like, oh, you know, who cares? Everybody knows that. When you actually see a world-class organization executing in every functional area, you can feel it. It's electric and, and people inside the organization can feel it and it's fun uh, and it builds on itself. Have you experienced any of that kind of electric feeling in your office? Oh, absolutely. It's this mix of where uh, like we hear some sort of like exciting news where, you know, it's something that we've been working on for, for months. Um, so, I mean, like something I can share right now, like fairly recently, we found out um, we uh, initially we got into a few REI stores. So it's like 
the biggest thing out there for outdoor, right? Camping, hiking, all of that. And then recently we found out that we expanded it to all of the stores. So it's like wow. we're doing good there, but that took a lot of time to build up, you know, like uh, the initially getting in there and then while they're in there where people are coming into the store asking about it. And there's like this moment where like, all right, all right, like we're done. <laughs> what else do we do? <laughs> but then that's happening like every week. And in between, there's a lot of struggle and figuring things out, things not working, especially marketing. There's like 80% of the stuff we do is just like not working. And we like move on to the next test, next experiment. So it's kind of like this mix up and they're like, all right, great news. Like we just had this awesome influencer talk about us. So like exactly like our, our efforts are paying off. So it's always like this mix of this, uh, um, uh, I'm you, with it. Yeah, you, yeah. It's yeah. the internal and the external, right? Because the internal can build itself and have that internal electricity and momentum, but it's fed from those external accomplishments. And I, you know, congratulations to the team over there for you know not just getting the initial placement and the testing in in REI, but being able to go wide. And you know that that's an important note for people who want to think about you know how to sell product or develop a product and then sell it e-commerce and then beyond. And there, remember, um, awesomers out there listening, that you know, still somewhere around 88 to 90 percent of all retail sales are still done in stores. Now, that's going to change. E-commerce will continue to take some market share, but the the total amount of volume done in stores will always be meaningful and extraordinary. And having the right partners will be a key. And that's uh, that's something that the Hero Clip uh, team is working on. And and anybody who's got experience in wholesale will tell you. There are pluses and minuses uh, to doing business at wholesale, but the, the number one thing that I would tell people is don't think you just send an email to somebody and then you have products in the shelf. It takes a long time and a lot of effort. Uh, is that something you would agree with, Yev? Oh yeah, for sure. And, and we have a sales director. He's taking care of all of that. So he's nurturing those relationships and working on new ones. And, and we're using digital marketing to amplify that. So I, I think that's a lot of your listeners may resonate with this where you know, it is like retail and digital, but lots of times we're just, we're sending out emails and running ads that we're talking about our retail store. So like we want people to go in there as well to make our, our buyers happy to, to buy more. And sometimes we're running ads and it's not necessarily like profitable because we actually can't even track what's happening in retail, but we want to make them happy. So they put in more bigger orders because we know like on, on digital, like we can recover, like if something isn't working, we can like get more traffic if we need to and optimize. So it's complementing the digital marketing with the retail as well. Yeah, that's so smart. It reminds me of uh, an experiment we did. Uh, we did, uh, I don't know how many people have ever heard of Sherwin Williams stores. Uh, if you're in America, you should have heard of them because they have around 4,400 locations. And we had a, uh, a test batch that we were doing, which was across all geographies of about 180 stores. So we did a product inside of the Sherwin Williams stores. And part of our idea was to drive a rebate program online through Facebook in those local regions for, for relevant audiences to try to help drive you know, customers into that store and drive interest into that store because we wanted them to be successful. We wanted to help our wholesale partner. And fundamentally, I think anybody who sells wholesale uh, or has this vision of selling wholesale, you know, hey, I've got this um, brand that I'm building and this my own unique item, I want to sell it. If, if you expect the retailers to do the job of marketing, you're making a mistake. Ultimately, retailers want the brand to drive the, the business and drive the volume. They don't expect to have to do that work. So that's a, a, a mistake that I think a lot of uh, newbies make when they think about wholesale. Gosh, if I just get it into you know, Home Depot or Walmart, then you know, I'm set. And you'll get some shelf, you know, assuming you do shelf space, physical space, you'll get some pickups that you wouldn't have gotten. But if you don't have a brand driving that, uh, it will be very tough sledding. So uh, that's my own uh, advice. So you have any notes about Hero Clip before we kind of dive into the, the authority part of this uh, episode where we're going to talk about uh, common e-commerce problems with Amazon businesses? Any final e Hero Clip notes? Uh, no, no final notes, but all of the data I'm going to talk about, I'm sure like throughout the, re the rest of this uh, meeting is that it's, it's going to include Hero Clip data. So yeah. No, so, it's really good. And uh, you know, kudos to you and the team for, you know, kind of being able to share with entrepreneurs, you know, kind of firsthand data, right? We don't, we're not talking about philosophy. We're not talking about theory. We're talking about real things. So let's um, actually, we're going to take another quick break real right here. And then when we come back, we're going to frame up this problem that especially uh, marketplace sellers, Amazon sellers in particular, advertising on Facebook 
have this big problem and it's called ROI, return on investment. How do they know if they're spending money wisely on Facebook? And we're going to come back with some answers right after this. Hey, Amazon Marketplace professionals, congratulations on your success to date. Your creativity, strategic vision, problem solving, and discipline have allowed you to build your own e-commerce business. Wouldn't it be great if you had more time to focus on the things that truly drive the sales and growth of your company? Instead of getting lost in a dozen different services and countless spreadsheets, what if there was one system that connected to your Amazon account and automatically gave you the information that you needed to make great decisions and really impact your business? Parsimony ERP can do that. Parsimony is the business operating system for your marketplace business. With Parsimony, you get true double entry bookkeeping, easy financial statements, full customer service tools, and I item by item profitability, along with project and task management, and more features are being added all the time. Learn more at parsimony.com. That's parsimony, P-A-R-S-I-M-O-N-Y.com. Parsimony.com. We've got that. Okay, back again, everybody. Steve Simonson with my special guest, uh, Yev Marasenko. Am I still close? Two for two. Yeah, you're good. All right. All right. That, that, I'm putting some points on the board today, everybody. For all the other names that I have uh, messed up, this is uh, my reprieve. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I, I kind of teased this before we went to break that, uh, you know, there's a common problem that Amazon sellers have. Can you help frame that problem for me? You know, what is the, the challenge they face when it comes to selling products using Facebook advertising? Yeah, I will. And actually I'm going to take a little step back because that's, it's like the second problem that most don't even know they're going to have <laughs> the first problem. And a lot of my colleagues and peers have, and a lot of people in your community have where you know, they're selling on Amazon, they're doing really great. They're somewhere trying to build up their brand. And then there's this point where, you know, when do I switch to um, off of Amazon or helping outside of outside traffic to either amplify your Amazon or just growing out, off of Amazon as well. So there's like this step. So the first problem is, all right, well, I'm getting into Facebook advertising. I'm looking at all of these guides and learning how to do it, running uh, Facebook ads. So there's like that. There's like this first problem, like doing that. So there's, there's a couple of tips I can share. Uh, yeah, that's about, a very good point. Today. It, it starts with this idea. That's a very good rewind because, you know, you, you're trying to sell something. You're on Amazon. Now, what do you do about it? Tell us, yeah, what, what's uh, kind of the first step? Yeah, you, you, you create an ad. <laughs> You link it to your, you point to your Amazon listing and you might use all kinds of URLs, you know, whether it's directly to your listing, to the search results, or people are going to the Amazon listing and most likely like, you know, people aren't buying. It's just like this, this weird journey, right? From a Facebook ad to an Amazon listing. So you, have, you like really have to dial in for that to work. Or then you might start, well, let me send it to, uh, to, to my website or a landing page where you might do like an exchange for a coupon and then doing email follow-ups. You might be testing from an ad to some sort of chat bot, uh, communicating, sending coupon through there, sending to Amazon. So then like, there's like all of these different strategies, right? And then, and then people are talking about, yeah, well then you, you want to use video and then use retargeting based on 75% view. That's, it gets complex, right? There's like so much you can do. And uh, some of it is working, some of it is not working and the really bad part. And uh, maybe this is good for Amazon. I don't know, but uh, there's like no data. Like Amazon doesn't give us any data or not much data at all to be able to track the effects of your results. So you're running all of this traffic. You're just like getting excited about, all right, I'm going to grow off Amazon or amplify your Amazon in different ways. And then you spend $10, a hundred dollars, few hundred dollars. And you're like, all right, I like, I think there was a little bump in sales, but I'm not sure which ad did that. Or there's like no effect. Uh, do I need to create new ads? Uh, so it, it's a big problem where like you can't track the results. So you don't know how to optimize. You don't know how to scale. And, and that's the process of digital marketing and marketing in general. You, uh, you test, you optimize, you scale. And we're kind of like left without those parts when we're trying to amplify Amazon. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, the, the concept of attribution is something that has kept me up more nights than probably anything else, right? We're spending money, but we don't know how to attribute the, you know, the sales, right? So, uh, as, as you have eloquently pointed out that it's like, all right, I'm spending some money on a, uh, Facebook or Google or wherever. And I think I saw a bump go up compared to normal, but you don't really know if it's directly attributable to the spend that you had. And so that lack of attribution is really something that gives a lot of people heartache. And, um, you know, a lot of people also don't realize, uh, it was recently, uh, released by a company called ROI revolution that, uh, 85% of products journeys now, according to their estimates, cross devices. 
right? Which only makes attribution that much worse, right? If you're going from your mobile to your computer, vice versa, tablet, wherever, uh, office versus, you know, home stuff, it, it can really create a, a lot of pain. And so, um, you know, that, that, that level of consternation has been something that has existed in marketing forever and is, is especially problematic when you have Amazon that shares no pixels, no, no backend data. Is that fair to say? Yeah, yeah, the, the multi-channel attribution only gets more complex. Yeah, and of course, uh, uh, maybe a, a fellow with, you know, the nice data science uh, or uh, understanding uh, like Yev, he probably is into this stuff. I, I have a brother who's heavily into analytics and, and loves this stuff, but a lot of us just glaze over and it's like, oh, geez, multi, I, there's another thing I got to learn about. It, it's really overwhelming. So what do you see that people do when they face this challenge, Yev? And I'll, I'll try to kind of sim simplify it towards the end, but first I'll give you, there's, there's five methods where I've seen people are using of helping their, their tracking and you can do this yourself. So this is like, usually if, let's say you're starting off, you probably have a lot of time. So like if you don't have uh, money, even though there's a lot of ways where you can like spend to increase your, your tracking, but like you have time, you can like do it yourself, figure it out. So there's uh, like the time where you can spend where uh, two common ways is that you can use unique coupon codes. So you create, codes in Amazon and then you give those codes out on your landing pages from your ads or in, in or somehow through your ads but you're gonna have to create a lot of different a coupon not not just for each for each user or if it's like a group code but if you're creating different ads it's gonna have to be a different coupon code that you're gonna have to track every single time of which ad is working you know if it's different images in your ads it's gonna have to be different coupon code so that's a lot of tracking especially if you want to scale, scale it up and a similar method is using the Amazon Associates affiliate link program. So you can use the affiliate link. Amazon tracks gives you that data because it's through their affiliate program. But then you kind of have to be, be careful where you're using the affiliate link or not. But again, you need to have a whole bunch of different links and all of your different ads. And then after you get sales, you have to come back and see which ad made the sale. And you're like manually keeping track of all of that. Uh, the, the, the third method, there is uh, ways you can through um, like the Amazon like storefront, they're like, they're sometimes switching the name, whether it's like the brand or the store where they provide some, uh, some data on where the traffic is coming from, but you're limited in where, like the URL that you're using, because it's kind of like the store. It's not like wherever you want to test. Uh, so there's some data there. Um, let me see what else. Oh yeah, you can do offline conversions. Um, this is a really good, it's really accurate. It's connected to like connecting Amazon and Facebook and uh, but the problem with that, you like you manually have to do that, export all of the data, get it all in the right columns for for Facebook. So you could have you know a marketing assistant or a VA help you with that. But you know, can they do it daily or doing weekly? So there's that method. And then uh, the other really common one is guessing. <laughs> you run ads and you don't know. <laughs> so that's what I see in a lot of sellers uh, where they just kind of have ads and they think one is doing better than the others, or they're like, oh, I'm getting hundreds of clicks, but I think there's sales coming through. Yeah, I, I have to say that uh, guessing is probably an, a, a great entrepreneurial, uh, uh, I don't know, weakness, uh, perhaps, because so many times we just follow our guts and, and our guts are pretty good, right? Our instincts are good. We're following it. We're following it. But I'll tell you, when it comes to um, marketing and advertising attributions, my guts have been wrong there more often than right. And, and there are surprises that you will find, little tweaks, little, little unexpected things. And I've found this to be, you know, in, in very significant scales, you know, where we would spend, you know, $100,000 on this particular campaign and I, we expected it to just be extraordinary. And it was, eh, you know, uh, produced right. maybe, you know, a half a million dollars worth of sales, five times, uh, you know, spend to revenue sounds pretty good, but it depends on the margin. That particular product had a low margin. It was not uh, profitable at that level. Whereas we, we tweaked it and we were able to get, uh, that same hundred thousand dollars to produce a million dollars with some of those attribution and tweaks. So my advice to entrepreneurs out there is to avoid guessing and to try to bring data to the equation. Uh, really, spending without true data is um, well, it's a fool's game, and it it it's, goes back to the very beginning days of marketing, where you know, guys, I don't know if it's Ogilvy or somebody who said, you know. Uh, they know that 50% of the marketing is working. They just don't know which 50%. <laughs> and when I started in digital marketing, you know, back in the late 90s, we were excited because we could put tracking links everywhere. But now marketplaces kind of restarted this whole idea of we don't know where the, the, the money's coming from. 
So now, now that we've kind of generally understand the problem, Yev, what do we do next to kind of, uh, you know, take steps towards solving the problem? Yeah, well, uh, they're like doing those methods. I mean, you, you can still do those. You'll have, you know, partial data. It, it'll definitely help you, but it's, some of those are a lot of work. And that, that, that led us to creating our own solution and I figured out how to do it. So kind of using like this offline conversion method and, and then also like this, the best benefits of some of those other uh, methods where I, I had an engineer that's basically going into the Amazon API and then the Facebook API. So things I don't really understand and you don't have to understand, but it's sending data from Amazon to Facebook and it's doing that attribution and it happens automatically. So that's the best part. I know for some of you, you just want something to happen automatically. This is what it does. So it helps you with attribution and it's, and it's live. Yeah, so, I love so basically that. Uh, what's happening. Oh, go ahead. I, yeah, I, I love the fact that you guys have kind of solved this problem because the, the manual part of this puzzle is a nightmare. But I, I wonder how many awesomers know how that manual process works. And I know you, you alluded to it earlier talking about offline and uploads, but can you just take through kind of the step by step? If you run an ad on Facebook, how that offline attribution happens now without a, a cool tool? Yeah, so the process is that you, you run your ad, Facebook user sees the ad, and then uh, let's say they, they click on the ad and it's going directly to Amazon. That's one of the common pathways. They're on Amazon, they make the purchase, and then Amazon has the data, the customer information, the order information, and then you have to export that in some way. So whether you use some of the other tools, so there's various tools out there where you can export the audience and then, uh, and then send that data from, uh, from those tools to Amazon, or uh, sorry, uh, so to Facebook. Let me just help on this, that what we're talking about here is taking your sales data from Amazon, making an export spreadsheet, you know, however you do it, whether you're using seller tools and, and Frankenstein in it together or some other tool that's off the shelf, uh, you have to take this data, a sales report essentially, and, and that's step one. And then what do you, yeah, you yeah. about formatting then, when step two? Yeah, is yeah, you take that data and then you have to put it into a way how Facebook likes it. And some of these different tools, they do like different levels of the job of like make it into a Facebook format, but still it, it doesn't accept it in all case. So you have this spreadsheet and then you make sure the data is in the right format and the column names are all correct because then you're going to be choosing that in Facebook to make sure it's pulling in, you know, the, the name and the address, all of that information uh, into Facebook. So that data is there um, in Facebook. So, uh, so some of these other tools, um, that's as far, as far as they go where they, you, you can kind of like create that audience. So here's your Amazon audience and you have that information now. So, yeah. and, and, and this is where the tool is really helpful where, well, first of all, it automates that entire step. It's like, all you have to do is run your ads and then, you know, the ad strategy, that's all up to you. You have to, you know, test different ads, uh, but you're going to see that data of which ones are, are leading to Amazon sales. And then all of that, the customer going to Amazon, uh, if somebody clicks the ad, even if they don't click the ad, if they just look at the ad and they don't click it and they kind of like see it in there and they're like, Oh, let me see. What was that? They go into Google directly search for it. And then there's a Amazon result there, or they go into Amazon directly. They type it in there. They purchase that order information is automatically sent through the tool. It does all that processing, all of the, the matching. Once, once it sends it to Facebook, there's like this custom algorithm in there where it also does certain things like it checks for the Amazon account name, Amazon shipping name, because sometimes they're different names um, as well. So it does that matching as well to increase the chances. And then it matches it to um, inside of Facebook. And so this is part where like some of these tools, you can kind of do it manually and it shows you, here's your audience. You have 60% match rate of your Amazon customers and that are actually Facebook users. Uh, but what the tool does next is, is this next level of attribution. And this is the best part because going through the Facebook API, it sees did that matched Facebook user who was an Amazon customer see an ad from your ad account. It's like it's linked the user to your ad account. Like, like were they exposed to it? Whether they clicked it or they view it, Facebook knows that data. So then if you have all kinds of ads going, the exact ad is going to show that sale in there. And then after um, the order is shipped, so it's marked as shipped, uh, that data is through and you move on to your like actual digital marketing practices. You turn off the worst ads, you put more budget into the ones that are working and you take off from there. So the tool like does that 
all of the steps in between automatically. I love that. So let's, uh, I'm going to come back with a couple of questions, but I, I just want to reinforce for the people. So the, the, the concept of running a Facebook ad and running it directly to your Amazon listing or some variation of your Amazon listing or even indirect, uh, the idea is that you can export your Amazon sales and then compare that to your, your Facebook ad campaigns and do offline matching. So this, this functionality exists and you can do it the manual way, which is you go get your sales data from Amazon, you export it, you format it, and then you have to import it into Facebook. And just imagine how often you're willing to do that. Are you going to do it every day? Uh, how about once a week? Uh, how about once a month? And, and pretty soon you're like, yeah, once a month sounds pretty good. And then you go, well, now how do you know when your ads are working? You have at least a month of lag time. You don't know if your ads are working or not. So that's a terrible idea. So then everybody goes, ah, I'll just have a VA do it. But, you know, what does that mean if you don't have a process? There's just so much pain that goes along with this concept of manual offline, you know, sales event tracking. Whereas uh, using Yev's tool, and we're going to have links as always in the show notes, and uh, you'll be able to go to the uh, Osmer's page to find all, all the little details to, to get access and, and probably even a little uh, uh, in, incentivized deal to help you get uh, a look at Yev's tool. But imagine taking all that pain away and go, hey, what if it was just automated and live? I mean, for me, like my whole body goes, oh, that's much better. <laughs> oh, geez. I far prefer automated and instant. Um, you have, what, what would you estimate the, the match percentages, uh, you know, median or average? However you look at it. Yeah, if, if I would say the average, it's around 75% across everybody. But I'm seeing big diversity and depends on the type of brand it is, the more common regions where the customers are. So it, it ranges between like 60 and 85%. And, uh, and still those numbers, it's, it's higher than some of the other tools that I've seen where they're like between 30 and 60%. Sometimes they go into like 70%. Uh, so it's on average, it's pretty good. It sounds definitely uh, that there's enough data sampling to give you directional support for your decisions about digital marketing. And you have talked very clearly about this idea that now that once you have the data, now, you know, forget the pain, whether you choose to do it manually or you choose to use a tool. Now that you have the data, you got to take action, right? And you turn down the ads that, that are not working, you turn up the ads that are working, and that's enough you know, data, critical information to be able to give you good direction to invest your money. Um, I, I did wonder about the, you know, you, you talked about the difference between an impression of the ad versus a click. Is there any sort of tracking that's done, you know, or, or um, data that is shared, like maybe a click is something that should lead to more customers than a, just a simple impression, or is it just a, a broad base, you know, they saw something or they clicked something and that's the data we're getting? Well, the best part, at least for me, is that there's no external dashboard. It's not like external software. Like this is all happening in the background and then the data is in your Facebook ad manager. It's basically an extra column. It's like a custom conversion, which is Amazon sales. So, so to answer your question is that all the rest of Facebook data is there. So that's what you have. You know, how people are engaging with the ad, how they're clicking the ad, you know, what, what kind of click it is, because there's all kinds of click data there. And then on the Amazon side, like we don't have anything. We don't have any data there other than the sale that's populated back. But the rest of the data, it's in Facebook ad manager and it's all the other good stuff there. Um, so if, um, I like to look at ratio of shares to reactions. I mean, that's a good indicator. If people are liking the ad if they're actually sharing it. So that data is there. I make some decisions based on that, uh, which ads I'm turning off and turning on. So all that data is a Facebook ad manager. Yeah, that's very interesting. So that's, that's good that it is native to Facebook so that you preserve all the data there. And then you're just adding the, the up until now difficult or impossible to get. Uh, Facebook probably announced this offline track, tracking mechanism maybe a year, year and a half ago. Uh, it was a beta before that. And we've had similar things with Google, by the way. Google has similar uh, types of uh, functionality available. And you know, all of this is to try to help actual offline sellers get data. I mean, ultimately that's, that's what they're tracking is, uh, they call it offline, which is to say that, you know, if you have a, a store and you get a bunch, you run a bunch of Facebook ads, you can upload your store sales data into Facebook and then do the matching. That's the original kind of intent behind it. But in our case, we're adapting that offline concept to online sales because yeah. Amazon is not tracking. And, and let me just make a plea out to my friends at Amazon. We've talked about this. 
Uh, I know we've had confidential discussions about this that I can't go into, but I'm begging you, get us some freaking pixels, get us some data. <laughs> we will spend money like crazy to drive more customers to Amazon. All, all sellers out there want to drive as much volume as they can, obviously to their own brand and make their own sales. That's what makes it profitable and sustainable. But give us some gosh darn tracking information. What do you think? You have a good idea? Absolutely. And uh, like this type of tool that, uh, that I made, like I've seen like two types of Amazon sellers where there's some and they're kind of like more like starting out or maybe like they're doing well on Amazon. Maybe they have like a million dollars annual sales and they're like maybe just starting to expand into other channels and the way this helps them they're like all right i see these ads and I'm like oh like they're not leading to any sales so for them it's more a decision of uh, like saving money so they're like turning off a bunch of ads that they realize they're not working and, and then putting that money into new experimentation and then the other group of sellers is where like they kind of they know what they're doing more they're like been experimenting with facebook more external traffic so they have more ads going they're like all right i'm seeing these ones are getting sales so let's like hundreds of dollars per day let's put it into that into those ads. So exactly like you're saying, like we're gonna spend the money, Amazon is gonna see we're gonna have more customers going through them from Facebook and uh, sellers will definitely help them. Yeah, so without a doubt, both Facebook and even Amazon and Google for that matter and any other online ad platform, that everybody understands this fundamental economic truth. If we put money in the top of the funnel and profit falls out of the bottom of the funnel, we'll keep doing it. Right. But the, the, the only way to understand, you know, how much money is going in the top and how much profit is coming out of the bottom is by having data. Right. And, and this is one of my axioms that you really you don't have a world class brand or company until you can pour money in the top and get profit out of the bottom. And too often people get confused about this idea that, well, I have a business and look how much, you know, uh, I'm doing gross volume or gross dollars. But they don't remember that you know, the magic pixie dust that existed once at Google on being able to manipulate, you know, SEO rankings that, that was just like a, a avalanche of, of quote unquote free traffic. And that, that same magic pixie dust exists today on Amazon where people are, are, you know, kind of ranking well in the organic search. But I, I, I'll make this prediction again today publicly in the future, you will have to pay for placement. You will have to pay to have your stuff, uh, prominently displayed on Amazon, Google, or anywhere else, because that's how these things work. And so you have to build your model to be able to pour money in the top and get profit out of the bottom. And it all has to be data driven. Uh, Yev, what do you think of my rant? My nuts? It's it's starting to go in that direction. So you're right on point so far. Uh, the, you know, have to advertise, and we see that in Facebook. You know, to get more reach, have to spend a little bit more. So that's still happening. Yeah, so this is, this is a, again, a history lesson. So since I'm an old guy, I'll, I'll just share, you know, back in my day, uh, here's how it was, right? So Google started out, we could manipulate it and we could, you know, do get really good SEO. And if we were on page one, you know, first spot, forget about it. We were making money. And by the way, there's a time where they didn't even run very many ads. Then they increased the ad space. And now, you know, there's ads all over the place and they're putting in all kinds of other uh, content pieces. And they're really... Uh, you know, compromising the so-called organic search. And I will tell you, you know, even that organic search has high correlations to people spending money uh, are going to have better organic search. But forget Google for a second, Facebook when it started out. If you got somebody to like your page, you, every time you published a message, that message went out to everybody who liked your page. And then Facebook said, hey, so much for the magic pixie dust. Now you can pay for that privilege. <laughs> we know that you advertise for Facebook and got all those people to go out and like your store, your, your online store, whatever it is. And, and we all did that, right? We, as, as sellers and as uh, retailers, we would say, hey, go to Facebook and, and do this thing. So, because we thought we could then talk to our customers for free. But Facebook yeah. pulled out the rug and said, no, no, now you can pay to talk to those people that you uh, encourage to join Facebook. And the same thing ultimately will happen at Amazon. Even though it hasn't happened today and people are welcome to disagree with me, I've seen the future and it is you will pay to play. So, all right, so that's enough of that rant. Uh, let, let's talk a, a little bit more, Yev, about this concept of, you know, how your software is developed. So you, you have the data background, you have an engineer who's helped you. How did you guys kind of suss out this solution? Um, you know, what was the, the stimuli that pushed you to, to develop this? Well, the main way was 
looking at hero clip data and just having this problem where I'm running ads to our website to Amazon and to our website I see the data because we have the Facebook pixel on there but we're in this area of trying to optimize our Amazon and getting more traffic there and like using a whole bunch of coupon codes to do all of the track I'm like oh my gosh that's, that's so much time so then it's just me researching all right what are different ways of doing it so coming across like those five different ways and then figuring out the offline conversions way of doing it and then there was like this way of like using Zapier to like do some integrations and it was like kind of like starting to work but not really and there's like some problems so there's uh, just like going down that path and then uh, that's when I like reached out try to find an engineer had a friend that works at Google that was giving me a lot of feedback and kind of uh, kind of working together and then it was just the engineering knowledge someone being able to get in there and know that they can like build out the process so I was just like me myself looking at our hero clip data and having this big need for us and then just pursuing it further yeah so often great ideas are born on the back of uh, my life would be better if blank happens, right? And uh, the oppressive nature of running all those reports and formatting all those reports and then uploading those reports is a good firsthand, you know, uh, kind of, you know, stuck in the minds kind of work, right? You're just, you're hunched over digging all day long for data. Whereas now that you've been able to suss out the solution, you, you've made it easier for yourselves, number one. And then you said, hey, what if I can make it easier for other guys? So how does that... Uh, you know, we'll, again, we'll give the links and things like that, but what is it, you know, when somebody connects with your, your new company, what do they have to do to, to um, start the process? Is it complicated? How does it work? Well, there's two different ways of doing it. One is kind of like the simpler version, but you basically, you give access to the tool. So it sends data from Amazon to Facebook. So there's like this easy setup, like you, you sign up and then you submit information and then it's like, it's all automatic. Like it, it's set up for you. Uh, but for that, the tool has access to everything. So for whoever has more of the, like concern of like the tools, like seeing some of the data because it's connecting it, then there's a, a different way where like the user, the, the seller, that Facebook advertiser can like go in and we give a bunch of instructions how to do it. Uh, but it's complex for some people. If you know the Facebook backend, it, it'll take you like only like around 20 to 30 minutes to set it up. Again, it's, it's not that fast, but for some people, it takes them a few hours. So that's why we offer the other option. Like we'll just like do it all for it, like set it up. And uh, it's just like giving access to the tool and it's uh, pretty easy on the back end. And then it just runs in the background like uh, forever. Like you don't have to do anything other than running ads and looking at your data. I love it. So I, I do think that's very prudent, right? Because there, there may be some folks out there who say, hey, listen, we don't want uh, our data to uh, be seen or you know, get, get loose or whatever. And so instead of just giving the keys, uh, you know, we've got this other solution. Uh, my, myself, I would probably just recommend you know, people just trust that the data will be used. I'm sure you guys have data and privacy policies that are, are very user friendly and, and pro seller. And so, yeah. you know, you're not going to give up that data. Nobody's going to see that data. And uh, so I would probably just take the easy option. Uh, and that's what I'd recommend to most people, the pain of setting it up yourself. Just it, it, to me, that's one more moving piece that could break later. Uh, especially if, you know, Amazon or Facebook, anybody changes their stuff. So uh, do you have a recommendation for most people? In terms yeah, yeah, that first option. And, and just one other thing to add is that after you give access and it's set up, um, then you just like take the access away and that's it. And that setup is sometimes done like the same day or, or it's like it just goes into the queue line and it's like within a couple of days and it's done. So definitely, definitely easier because the other option uh, like we can't see into the account. So we get all of these questions. We're like, wait, like, I, I don't see this, how to do this. I'm like, well, like we gave instructions. We, we're not in the account. You kind of have to figure it out yourself. So some sellers like haven't figured it out and then finally give us access and then we set it up really quickly. Yeah, no, it's, it, it definitely, I, I just love the idea that you are able to build the solution so that other folks out there who have this same problem, and there's so many of us out there who have the same problem, can utilize it. And I think that in itself is a, is a great entrepreneurial moment. Uh, what was there, was there any defining point for you, Yev, where you said, you know, I, I'm going to make this into a business, you know, was there some point where you just get kind of said, wait a minute, hang on, there's an opportunity here. Well, there's several masterminds I'm in. So kind of like different groups on Facebook with Amazon brands and Facebook advertisers. And for, for the first month, it was letting my colleagues use it and they're like, oh my gosh, like I need this. And that was just feedback to me, letting the peers use it and uh, seeing right away where it's creating value. So then uh, like 
word of mouth started and then it like spread really fast. So it's like, all right, there's actually a need for this beyond just like me and geeking out about data and attribution like you, like other people want this as well. So yeah. it was just, yeah, word of mouth, other people. I love it. That's a, that's a great viral idea for sure. Uh, let me ask you this. Uh, you have, so I've talked about this concept of using chatbots. And, and for me, uh, I love the sellerchatbot.com solution because they actually have one-time use coupons that you can automatically populate. You don't have to put in any Zapier connections or any of that kind of stuff, uh, which is a giant pain in the keister and can be quite expensive for high volume sellers. It's all baked into the sellerchatbot.com. Um, but will this work for messenger driven interactions on Facebook as well? It will, as long as it starts off with an ad. So when your list subscriber starts off with an ad and whether it's like, uh, you're doing it from the business manager or like from your page, there's different ways you can run an ad to activate the, the chat bot. Uh, so it'll work in all of those cases as long as uh, it starts off from the list. And then whatever your sequences are, your communication, um, all of that, uh, even if someone is not engaging with your chatbot, they just like go exact, uh, directly to Amazon, but they started off seeing your ad originally. Um, like what happens in between doesn't matter. And like the chatbot is included in that. So definitely com compatible. Uh, and that's really good because if somebody engages the chatbot on their own without seeing an ad, we don't really want that to attribute to a, a future sale, right? Because it would be giving an ad it doesn't have anything to attribute it to, but it would be giving the advertising budget uh, influence that it didn't earn. Whereas if it starts from some sort of, you know, hey, we've got this great coupon or we've got this great offer, and then it drives into the bot flow, uh, you're agnostic. It doesn't matter what happens between the ad and the sale is what you're saying. Right, because that part where it's from an ad, that's something you can control and you can scale it up, right? So that attribution is important for you to know that you're going to take the ad budget, you know, add zeros to the ad budget to increase it. If some people are coming across it the other way, it's ways you can't control. So it's nice to have those additional sales, but we can't control it and scale that up. Yeah, for sure. So let me ask you this. Um, I, I, I get this question from time to time, and you're a Facebook expert as far as I can uh, estimate. Uh, a lot of people say, hey, you know, I've been boosting posts on my uh, Facebook page and I'm not seeing any results. Uh, what would you tell them? We actually see good results from our boosted posts, but they're harder to scale. So that's the difference where individually a boost post, it's a, it could be a higher quality audience because first it's like linked to, to your page. And I see where the reach is, is, is better and like the, the CPMs are lower. But that reach uh, better meaning like per how, per how much you're paying, but it like maxes out, maxes out, maximizes out much quicker than running it from like not a boosted post. So uh, like it's definitely working. I think you just have to like dial in your targeting once you're selecting there and just try the couple of different options and there's not, not that many options. So definitely works, but you can't control it and scale it up because you just like hit the boost button, that's it. It's not like where, well, let me create 10 different variants and see which one is working better. So then that way I know like the next like boost is the one that's working better, not however that post was made. So you just have less control. Yeah, that's for sure. And uh, are you an active user of the new Facebook kind of dynamic uh, split testing or multivariate testing? Uh, I, I know they have a different name for it. It's escaping my mind, but it's where you create an ad and you enter all the dynamic fields and so forth. Is that something you use regularly? I've used it a few times. Times and I hear others that are having really great results, but uh, for, for me, I just kind of like have my process down a different way. I'm like just specifically for Hero Clip, so I haven't scaled up using that way. I definitely would recommend uh, not just Yev, but uh, the folks out there listening. So the, this new dynamic um, ad generator essentially creates all the variations, and Facebook does all the math for you. So you can upload, you know, five or ten videos, five or ten images, five or ten headlines you know, there's, there's five or six different variables that you upload and, and then Facebook does all the matching as to, you know, what works best. And to me, that's a really, especially for somebody who's not as sophisticated as somebody like you, you have, right. Where, the, you know, you, you already have all these buckets of testing you want to do and, and you know how you want to slice and dice it, uh, that this can kind of, uh, dumb it down for those of us who don't have quite that experience. Uh, and, and if you do happen to use it, let's, we'll share some, uh, some of your experience. I do know guys using it who are having very, very positive results. And again, they, it's always that counterintuitive. You know, we put this graphic out there, I didn't think it was gonna do much, and it became the number one graphic used. And this call to action, which I thought was weak, turned out to be the most popular one amongst uh, you know, viewers. Do you ever find those surprises in your own data? 
Absolutely. And I'm glad you brought that up because this is how we, we figured out our ads at Heroclip is through that approach. Um, not using that new feature from Facebook, but doing it ourselves with different variants. And this is actually one of the most common questions I get from like a problem. And also when I see solution from certain sellers, like they figure this part out and it's this is that commonly I just see like just like one ad in an account. They're just like testing one thing. Cause they just like created like, Oh yeah, it's probably good. They run to it. And then like, um, well, first of all, they didn't know if it was working or not, but it's just one variant and the ones that have figured it out. And this is like, this is the way we made it work through hero clip is that we started off with a whole bunch of variants. That's the only way, you know, how you can reach into like different psychologies of the buyer where some are more analytical. They want to see the specs and the price, the details. Some are more emotional. They want to see kind of more like the story behind the product. So you kind of like, reach out all of those visuals, the different copy, the different headlines, and the more variants you have, you're going to find those extreme excellent versions that get the highest click-through rates, the lowest cost per clicks. And that's how you're telling Facebook where like, I'm better than other advertisers. So give me even lower cost because the users are enjoying this. They're clicking on it. So there's like curiosity behind it. Um, that's like some of those ads do well. So like starting off with many variants, that's how you, narrow down and we do it really fast. That's like the other thing we do where we just test a whole bunch of things and really fast narrow down, like turn off everything that wasn't working, the most expensive ones. So now we're left with you know, two or five different ads that are like the best of the whole bunch rather than randomly starting off with one and we don't know how it fits into the range of like great to really bad. And that's what a lot of sellers do and they're, I think they're struggling because they just don't test enough a variety initially. Well, that's, it is because the discipline to test so much variety is something that's hard to cope with. In fact, it's the same kind of discipline that is what led you to create your, your tool, right? This automatic matching tool. The, the fact is, all of that work that goes in, you're still willing to do it and you have the capacity to do it. More importantly, you have the understanding and you have the discipline to execute it. Whereas most of us don't have that quite yet, but we've got to get it, right? There, there really is no way to find the best of the best without going through that optimization and iteration process uh, with ads and copy and, and all the other things. Uh, so uh, you have any uh, final words of wisdom in terms of the, um, you know, kind of concept that you're bringing forth to the world uh, with this uh, new tool? It's a great transi transition with what you just said, where uh, like when I figured it out, it was based on shop, like Shopify, we're on Shopify or website. So I saw that data there. I would do all of these tests and the purchase data was there. And I didn't have that on Amazon. So like there was this problem. So like you like have this advantage as the Amazon brand where like before, no, like no, nobody did like that data is there automatically. So if you don't want to get into like optimizing your website yet, you can do that for Amazon. So you just have to test, create variants. The data is in there. You just have to take action and then see how, how it works for you. Cause there's the, the potential for you to scale it up. You just have to like take that potential and, and work with it. And if it doesn't work, then at least, you know, like you have that opportunity to kind of scale up your ads and amplify your Amazon. Yep, no doubt. And stay tuned because uh, after our next break, we're gonna come back and we're gonna talk about the, the way you can connect with uh, Yev's tool and any uh, special offers that are available. It's gonna be exciting and it's something that Yev uh, just shows his ongoing commitment to entrepreneurs out there. You know, he's been a guy who gives very freely and follows that that famous Zig Ziglar saying, which I have uh, always followed or try to follow, which is, you know, you can have everything you want in your life. If you help enough other people get what they want in their life. Uh, and I'm paraphrasing there, but Yev does that, right? Uh, he was able to uh, pop into a, a recent Catalyst 88 mastermind event. And uh, he happened to be uh, in town where we were having a dinner and where he was talking about his new tool. And I caught wind of it. I'm like, Hey, you got to come and tell us about that. And we literally had him come back the very next day and he was generous with his time and his ideas. And that's why I know Yev's an awesomer. So uh, I really appreciate you joining us, Yev, and, and I appreciate and thank you for all the things you do for entrepreneurs out there. Thank you, Steve. I really enjoyed this. Hope it was helpful. No question it was. Well, awesomers, uh, uh, this is uh, no doubt another time for you to uh, you know, take a minute. We're going to listen to a sponsor break, and then we're going to come back and tell you how to take action today. We'll be right back. Catalyst 88 was developed to help entrepreneurs achieve their short and long-term goals in e-commerce markets by utilizing the power of shared entrepreneurial wisdom. Entrepreneurship is nothing if not lessons to be learned. Learn from others. Learn from us. I guarantee that we will learn from you. Visit Catalyst88.com because your success is our success. A giddy up. 
Well, another great episode, everybody. It is always such a pleasure to speak with somebody who's so passionate and uh, has so much knowledge in the e-commerce space. And by you know taking some of the lessons we've learned from Yev, uh, not just his tool, but just kind of the, the his approach to marketing and you know always using testing and things like that, I think all of us can benefit and our businesses as well can benefit. Now, don't forget, this is awesomers.com, episode number 17, and you can just go to awesomers.com slash 17 to get access to the show notes and, and some of the relevant links we may have talked about and so on and so forth. Well, we've done it again, everybody. We have another episode of the Awesomers podcast ready for the world. Thank you for joining us, and we hope that you've enjoyed our program today. Now's a good time to take a moment to subscribe, like, and share this podcast. Heck, you could even leave a, a review if you wanted. Awesomers around you will appreciate your help. It's only with your participation and sharing that we'll be able to achieve our goals. Our success is literally in your hands. Thank you again for joining us. We are at your service. Find out more about me, Steve Simonson, our guest, team, and all the other Awesomers involved at Awesomers.com. Thank you again. Awesomers.com.